What's up, family? Welcome back to the Be Lanise Show. It's your favorite host, Brittany Lanise. So we're just going to jump right into it today. Today's topic is procrastination, y'all. This topic right here is fire. Y'all do not understand. Like, when I say procrastination is the story of my life, being lazy, story of my life, it honestly wasn't until March 1st, mind you, you know that we're on this Lent journey right now. We started Lent back in February. It's over in April. But I started another journey where I am not being lazy anymore and I'm not procrastinating anymore. And I started it March 1st. Y'all, when I tell y'all this junk has been so hard, it has been so hard. But I'm doing it, y'all. And now I'm not being lazy. I'm not procrastinating. Granted, I'm still very, 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 very forgetful and I still have to write stuff down, but I am not procrastinating like I used to. And the very first thing that's on this list, because y'all know I got the list, and this is Entrepreneur Edition. For the very first thing that I have on my list is to pray. Prayer, 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 prayer. Y'all have to pray. You cannot stop procrastinating without praying. You cannot stop being lazy without praying. Like, I know a lot of people be feeling like they don't need God, but y'all know that I am strong and go hard for mine. Y'all have to pray. Y'all have to ask God to remove the lazy bones in your body. You have to have God ask God to give you the wherewithal to get things done in a timely fashion. Ask him to give you the mind power. Ask him to give you the strength to get through that task. And I guarantee you, once you start the task, it's going to be so much better. Just start. That should be the quote for March. Just start. That's March quote, you guys. Just start. That's it. You just have to start. So first thing on my list is to pray. Y'all know that y'all have to pray. Second thing, find out the root of the problem. Let's figure out why you're procrastinating in the first place. What is it about this task that you that you have to do that you're dreading so much? Like, is the thing that you have to do super boring? Is it super difficult? Is it, you know, not easy? Do you have to do the task with someone you don't like? Like, let's truly, truly, truly get to the bottom of why you're procrastinating. Like, I know when I was in school, for me procrastination came whenever I had to do paper, type of paper, do homework, study, you know, things like that. One, who likes to type papers? And then you have to type a paper on a crazy topic or on a book you read or something. Like, it's very rare that teachers were allowing us to write papers on topics that we wanted to talk about, even if it was a topic that we wanted to talk about. I can't think of 10 pages worth of stuff to write about. Then I got to find my sources. You know, like, it's a difficult, tedious process. And then not to mention it have to be in APA format and my sources have to be cited a certain way. Like, that's a lot, okay? So, no, it's not something that I wanted to just run home to mom about and do. So I could see how that could be a problem. And, like, for me, making wigs. I love making wigs and I love to sew. However... It is a long, drawn-out process. Making a wig is a long process. And think, if I have seven wigs to do and I only have five days to get them done, I most likely I'm going to procrastinate because I don't want to do the long process. But I like, and that's the thing, like, I love making wigs, but I'm a perfectionist at that as well. And then I try to do everything at one time, so that's getting the girls' measurements together and measuring the cap and then sewing it to fit the girl's head and then putting tracks on it. It's just a lot. That doesn't mean that I don't want to do it and I don't like to do it, but I know that it's a lot. And I know that if I'm pressed for time one day, that I'm going to end up putting it off to where I can do it on a day that I have more than enough time to get it done. Or I know I don't like doing graphic design that much. So... If I have to post something that needs some graphic design on it, opposed to me paying someone to do it because I'm trying to save money right now, I have to do it myself, which I really don't like 
to do it that much. It doesn't entertain me. It doesn't, you know, it really don't do nothing for me. So if those are the reasons why you don't, you know, you're not wanting to do anything, you have to first alter your mindset. And then you have to just do first things first. Like, don't do small things first or big things first. Do first things first. So, if you know, like for me, if I know that the bulk of my money is going to come from me making wigs, then I know that I need to get up at 5 a.m. every single day, meditate, work out, and get right on my wigs. Because that's what's going to bring me the main source of my income. That is how I pay all of my bills. So I need to make sure that I'm getting on my wig stuff first. I need to make sure that I'm reaching back out to my clients that are DMing me, texting me, writing me on my website. You know, just making sure I fully get, respond back to everyone, and then get right on it. And y'all, it's not easy. Being an entrepreneur is not easy, and I commend all entrepreneurs who are an entrepreneur and have a full-time job like myself and have a side hustle on top of your entrepreneurship, your business, and your job. Like, I commend y'all because I know how much it is for me. Oh, and in school, like, come on now, y'all, y'all a different type of person. Y'all are different type of humans, and I commend y'all. I personally, I do. So the next thing is getting over the lazy hump and get it out of your head. Stop putting off what you can do today for tomorrow. And it's just that simple. But like I said, if you know for 100% that you're not going to have the time to get this project done in full, then I would recommend putting it off. But I would still do something. Do something. And this is where I implement a 10-minute rule into my routine. So when it comes to my wigs, and I know that I'm not going to have enough time, or I know that I'm pressed for time, the very first thing that I will do is say, okay, let me take 10 minutes and do something with this wig. So whether that be me bleach the knots, which it takes 10 minutes to bleach the knots, and then I let the bleach sit on there. You know, this is lady talk. Me and y'all really don't know what's going on. But you know, or that's me straightening the bundles, washing the bundles, letting the bundles sit in a deep conditioner, um, anything, you know, doing anything towards getting the project done. I would do just take 10 minutes, get it done. After the 10 minutes, that's it. Come back to it when you have time. Then I also set up a 60 second rule for myself. So no, I don't feel like doing this thing. I don't feel like getting up. I do not want to get off the bed, but Set 60 seconds for yourself. You count from 60 to 1. Once you get to 0, get up and just do it. Just do it. It's not about being motivated because so many people are saying like, oh, I'm unmotivated and I don't feel like doing it. But at the end of the day, it's not about motivation right now. It's about your discipline. And it's about, honestly, you living. As an entrepreneur, if you don't work your business You're not going to eat. You're not going to have any money. So that's where your discipline come in right there because you don't want to be broke. I don't care what nobody says. Nobody wants to be broke. And you can't pay me enough to believe that there's one person who wants to not have any money. No way. Not going for it. Not happening. Take Take your 60 seconds. Get up and do it because it's all in your mindset. The next thing you need to do is create a daily habit. So for me, my daily habit is waking up at 5 a.m. I meditate. I write in my journal. I have a journal where I write down my dreams. So if I like a crazy dream or anything like that, I'm writing that down as well. After I do that, I'm checking my emails. I'm checking my social media. And I'm responding back to DMs that I got. I'm responding to text messages that I may have gotten overnight. Any orders that came through overnight, I'm just processing them. Um, You know, especially like if it's lashes or something, that's simple. I can ship those out same day. So I'm just processing my orders and getting my orders together, writing everything down that I need to do, checking my emails, creating my daily to-do list. Y'all, also... Make up your bed every morning. Like, when you get out of the bed, just make it up. It's so easy. It's so simple. I promise you, it will declutter your day that much. Promise. So, have a routine. You need a daily routine. And after I 
do all that stuff and my workout and get back to my clients, it's normally time for me to come home and eat. So I eat my breakfast and then I clock in for work. And I'll start working, you know, I'll work all day on my lunch just because I'm trying to be summer goal, summer body 2021. Half my lunch, I work out. The other half of my lunch, I'm going to the post office to drop off my deliveries. So that's anything, whether it be my wigs, my lashes, bonnets, anything. I'm taking it to the post office and I'm dropping it off. But I work out as well. So it's just the discipline. Because a lot of people are like, wow, you don't eat on lunch, but I eat a big breakfast. Or they're like, wow, you don't only do wigs on lunch or you don't only work out on lunch. It's the discipline in me to make me, you know, every day I need to make sure I work out twice a day and I need to make sure that I get all my wig paperwork stuff done and I need to make sure I get, I physically get started on my wigs in the afternoon. So for me, how I had that 10 minute rule, a 10 minute routine for every single thing, whether if I don't have enough time for it on my lunch, I know that I have 30 minutes. So I'm taking my 30 minutes and doing what I got to do. After work is normally when I do my wigs thing. So let's just say I normally off between three and five. So I know that between either three and eight or five and ten, I'm doing wig stuff. And that's when I get the bulk of my stuff done. That's where I'm like, okay, let's turn on this jazz music or let's turn on this trap music. Y'all, I listen to ghetto gangster music when I'm doing my wig stuff or I'm listening to jazz that has no words in it and then there's some days where I'm just listening to different YouTubes listening to different podcasts just to gain information or I'm listening to audiobooks you guys doing that while you're working on your projects while you're working on whatever it is that you're selling just listening to something powerful something inspiring learning a new task while you're completing a task That will help you so much in the future. So the next thing is to break down the things that you need to do and create them into low priority tasks. So for me, I know that I need to make wigs, okay? I have my wig tasks broken down into 10-minute tasks. So I know that if I'm trying to do seven wigs at once, I have 10-minute tasks. My first 10-minute task could be me measuring out the wig, sewing everything to where it needs to be, making it smaller, making it bigger, whatever. I do that seven times. Okay, that's one hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes, but I got it down pat to where I can do everything for one hour and have it good. So now I need to bleach. Okay, so now I mix up all my bleach and I do one wig. That's probably going to take 10 to 15. Another wig, 10 to 15, just depending on what the client orders. Sometimes it's five, but I have the bleaching process broken down into an hour. Okay, now I need to wash the hair. So now I have that broken down into an hour, and this is all to do it in bulk. And I just find it so much easier to do it in bulk. I just find it so much easier to make low priority tasks instead of just doing everything all the way through. It's a lot easier to have multiple little tasks. The next thing on my list is stop waiting to be in the mood to do things. And we need to come up with a procrastination tactic that will keep us from procrastinating. So I Googled a few things and it's called mindtools.com. These tips are to, they say it's to adopt an anti-procrastination strategy. The first thing on this list says that you need to forgive yourself for procrastinating in the past. Y'all, you have to forgive yourself. Like, you cannot be mad at yourself. And yes, I understand we are our biggest critics and we will always be our biggest critics. But you have to forgive yourself. You have to allow yourself to make mistakes because are you human? Yes. Are you flawed? Yes. Are you perfect? No. Perfect does not exist. And you're going to make mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you're not learning anything. Like a person who doesn't make mistakes hasn't learned anything. So allow yourself to make a mistake. Yeah, sometimes you put off things that you don't want to do. But 
once you forgive yourself for doing that, you're more likely to not procrastinate in the future because you've allowed yourself to make those mistakes. Next thing is commit to a task and focus on doing that, not avoiding the task. Write the task down and get it done. The next thing is to promise yourself a reward. Like for me, I know that I like to shop. So if I get my wigs done, I said I have an amount of wigs that I have to do a day depending on my orders. If I get those wigs done, I'm taking $30 and I'm going to buy me something. <laughs> I don't care what it is. I'm taking my little 30 and I'm going to do something nice for myself. The next thing is to ask someone to check on, check on you. Peer pressure works. Having an accountability partner works. We all need an accountability partner. You have to have someone who holds you accountable when you're not holding yourself accountable because at the end of the day, you're not going to always hold yourself accountable how someone on the outside looking in would. If you, st- if you stress to them how important this is to you, they'll make sure to check on you. Like, all right, Britt, how's those wigs coming along? All right, Britt, did you finish your lashes for today? You know, the next thing is act as you go. Tackle tasks as soon as they come. Don't let them build up over, like, over time. So when I say that for my entrepreneurs, let's just say that you get a DM on Instagram. And granted, you're in the middle of something. But this DM is from a potential client who is going to make you sell out. Let's just say that. So you could just see the priority of the response that you need to give. So this client who DM'd you ultimately is going to be the reason that you sell out of your product in the next two or three days. Instead of responding back to your client right then and there when they write you, you put it off for, let's just say you put it off for 30 minutes. Like, oh, I'll get back to them in one second. All right. 30 minutes come, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to write them in an hour. I'm going to get right back to them in one hour. Okay, an hour pass. You, oh, let me do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. You see how you just keep putting it off or you keep saying, oh, I'll get to them later. Or you keep saying, oh, I'll reply to them later. I'll respond to them later. This person could have made you sell out. But because you kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, Now you've lost their business. What if they sent a super super long paragraph? You just read the first two sentences. You never even took the time to open it. And it was a time-sensitive matter. Now you done missed out on thousands of dollars because you put it off. You put something off for later that you could have got done right then and there. And as an entrepreneur, I'm not saying that you have to give all of your time to your customers. But your customers are your why. Your customers are the reason why you're in business. So if someone's trying to reach out to you and get in contact with you about your business, write them back right then and there. Don't put it off. And I cannot stress that enough. The next thing is minimize your distractions. And oh, honey, now I know that I just told you guys that you need to reply back to customers or have a time window or a time period where you're responding. But for me, I know that between 3 and 8 when I get off or 5 and 10 when I get off, I need to be focused. Now, that doesn't mean that I put my phone on D&D or anything like that because this business phone do not start ringing. However, I'm not on social media, but I have... On Facebook, they have this, like, what is it called? Basically, let me find it on my phone. It's the business suite, yeah. So on Facebook, they have a business suite, which for me, I love this because whenever I get a DM on Facebook or someone comments under a post, it comes through. So I know that if it's from Instagram and it did not show up on my business suite, I don't need to worry about it. There's nothing happening on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. It can wait. Promise you, it can wait. And your Facebook comments that come through or messages that come through as well on Messenger, 
come through on your business suite. Anything on Instagram and Facebook, they'll come in on your business suite. I love using that because that allows me to cut out all distractions from social media. That allows me to cut out all distractions around me to get what I need to get done. I don't use TV either. Like I said, I turn on a podcast or a YouTube channel or turn on a YouTube or something like that. And I just let it play in the background. That That's it. That's all. Next, keep a to-do list. Prioritize your to-do list. Become a master of scheduling, project planning. I love project planning and scheduling. I use my calendar and my phone like clockwork. Every single thing is in my calendar and my phone. And then I also have a physical calendar at home because, for granted, granted, anything could happen. And I won't have my phone or I won't have my iPad. But at least I have a physical paper calendar. And then I also have a giant glass calendar where I use a dry eraser marker on there. So every night when I come home, I'm filling in my calendar with what's going on with the days to come. Just to ensure that I get everything done in a timely manner. And to make sure that I get everything done in a timely fashion. Next thing is I say tackle your hardest task first. And that is why I say do first things first. If you do the first thing on your list first. The hard, I'm sorry, not the first thing, but the hardest thing on your list first. I promise you the rest of your day will be a cakewalk. Unless you just have all hard tasks on your list but at least if you get all the hard tasks out the way the next day you won't have to worry about them it'll be easy done just like that set yourself time goals set yourself time limits so that's just saying like hey siri set me a 10 minute timer watch siri say okay 10 minute timer okay 10 minutes and counting (laughs) you know now as soon as that timer starts, I'm doing my task, doing my task, wrapping it up, getting everything done. That could be for anything. Like, my room, y'all, as a woman, and I don't know if men have this problem, but as a woman, getting dressed, doing my makeup, doing my hair, my room turns into, what do I want to call it, a catastrophe, a natural disaster, or a tornado, a tsunami, a volcano eruption of clothes, like clothes, hair stuff, makeup, everything, purses, shoes, it's everywhere. So what I start doing, I know 10 minutes before I leave the house, I need to clean up what I messed up because I don't like coming home to a dirty junkie any of that. So I know that 10, 7 to 10 minutes before I leave the house, I just need to spot clean and clean up and put everything back. Y'all, this has saved me so much time. This has helped me so much. Like, just setting 10 minutes for yourself, doing that task, and then sometimes, once you get that 10 minutes going, it may turn into 20. It may turn into 30. It may turn into an hour. And that is what we want so we can get it done. Once you get it done, praise yourself, congratulate yourself, and move on to the next thing. This year, we are not procrastinating in 2021. I'm done with my notes. I just want to make sure I'm done. Yeah, I'm done with my notes. But now I'm just going to give you guys a little motivational tip. This year, we are not procrastinating. What did I say that this month's quote was? Just do it. I feel like it's not just do it. It probably is. Or just start. Start now. I don't remember what this month's quote was. And y'all know I'm very hot. Humble, open, and transparent. I'm not going back. I'm not going to pause this and go back and figure it out. Just refer back to the beginning of the podcast. I was about to say video. But just refer back refer back to the beginning of the podcast to get the answers that you're looking for, you guys. We are not procrastinating in 2021. It takes how many days? I want to say it takes 21 days or 30 days to develop a habit. It takes, hmm, is it seven days to break the habit? 
It could be one day to break the habit, honestly, because it just takes you one day to say, oh, I'm not going, I'm not doing it. And then the next day you don't do it. But y'all just have to work on being consistent. Consistency is key, especially when you're an entrepreneur. Consistency is key. Just go for it. Just do it. Just do it. Like, that's all you have to do is just start. Just start and do it. Get up and do it. That's it. All right, you guys, I'm done rambling. Until next time, peace. Oh, no, no, no. Don't click off yet. I always forget to not to shout out my socials. Y'all follow me on Instagram at The Belanese Show. Follow me on Twitter at The Belanese Show. Follow me on Snapchat at The Belanese Show. And then everything that you search The Belanese Show, search Wigs by Brit as well. And then follow my business page. Because I really want to grow my personal page. But, like, I don't take a pic- I don't take enough pictures and I definitely don't post enough. But, for real, y'all, check out my website, wigsbybrit.com. Brit has two T's. For real this time, until next time, peace.